maybe a few months back, I started to seriously think about why is it that CRM systems have such bad data, when is when I've worked with other systems, specifically ERP systems, um, my data was so much better. Um, and then I ended up authoring this article, you know, why are CRM systems so susceptible to bad data? Um, and then when I authored this, I kept getting complaints, thank you, what do I do about it? Um, and, then, and then I ended up authoring this article. So these two articles, um, they're online, if you search for me you'll find them fairly easily, um, and they're basically the summation of uh, this talk today. So start with the first one. Um, why are CRM systems so susceptible to bad data? Uh, we'll call it uh, six reasons. Why? All right. Um, so first reason, CRM data goes stale incredibly fast. Um, so this is from an article from Informatica where it's telling you that at least 30% of your data decays every year, right? Um, and they're saying here it can be as high as 70% per year if you're in a high turnover industry like Silicon Valley technology. Um, Right, so, and the reason that CRM data goes stale so fast is that when you're looking at CRM data, you're generally track, you're generally heavily focused on current state data as opposed to historical data. Whereas if you're looking at something like an ERP system or some kind of transactional system, transactions happened in the past, don't change. Um, ERP systems, right, I'll have a customer record, their current address, their current customer, so if their address changes, they're gonna let me know. Um, and even if it doesn't change, I really don't care until I get another order and then it's updated. And then plus every time I ship, I have my historical data there on the invoice record with their address. Um, and that stuff is generally pristine till the end of time. Same with airlines, right? Their, their travel history doesn't change. Um, when you're looking at CRM data, you're thinking uh, current state. So I'm looking, um, people move homes, they change email addresses, they change companies, companies change names, companies move. People change roles within the company. They change their email address. Uh, my own company just rebranded was GSD co uh, company. Now it's Playdip. Just a month ago, right? That basically kills everyone's contacts and all their uh, CRM systems around the world. So, reason number one: CRM system data goes stale really, really fast. Um, reason number two: you have a lot of data entry by non-data professionals. Um, generally salespeople, who are the worst data entry people that exist, right? So, and what's worse is they're basically um, begging for information, right? They're working a prospect, they can't demand the prospect to give them good data, they have no way of validating it. Um, so they're essentially working with their prospect, sometimes they consider it um, somewhat of a pain to enter this data. Um, and then what happens is I can't, the prospect's not going to tell me how many employees they have, not going to tell me their revenue last year. So the admin can't even force those fields to be required and then um, you end up with the kind of missing data. And then even if they do happen to get that data, how much will your revenue last year? How many employees do you have? Nobody ever goes back and updates that, right? It kind of just sits and that goes back into that um, staleness problem. Okay. Reason number three, lots and lots of free text. Um, so every, every screen in Salesforce is gonna have a giant box with notes and you can just type in whatever you want um, and there is no structure to it, no control over it. Um, heavy, heavy on activities and interactivity notes. There's a notes object, um, not to mention attachments. All of that's data and you essentially can't do anything with it save um, building some highly complex AI platform. Now there's voice to text, right? Sorry? Now people can do voice to text. Yeah, yes, correct. So you have voice data too, um, which will get converted to text. Everything gets converted to text at the end of the day. Here's my pictures. Your, your logo. Yes. Acme. Mm -hmm. um, right, so you capture notes everywhere. Um, a side note, text has also become a security nightmare. Um, Every time we have to like deal with some level of encryption, what if I type that data into the notes field? Because I have no control over it. And even if I use Einstein natively, you, obviously you can customize Einstein a whole lot. It really only classifies your free text into two ways, which is intent and sentiment. Um, so intent is what is the user trying to do, basically, usually um, routing email type stuff. Um, and then sentiment is telling you that it's a happy, a happy note or a sad note or an angry note 
right? So it's not really going to help you in terms of your data classification. Um, nothing wrong with free text fields. They're great at the record level um, for human consumption, but in terms of holistic viewing your corporate level, marketing, almost useless. A UI-focused data model, um, and I'm gonna drill into this a bit too in the next reason, because it, 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 um, it resonates with this. So generally, coming from a data background, um, and anyone who's been involved in system architecture, the standard thinking is, my data is going to outlive your system by 20 years. Um, and if I'm building a data store, essentially a backend database, I'm gonna design my, my data management system to meet the needs of the data, not to meet the, the needs of the presentation. Um, and then I'm gonna throw that off to the developers. My data is gonna be clean, and it's gonna be structured and managed, um, and you'll have to deal with how to present that to, in your UI layer. And then when you talk to a CRM professional, it's like, nah, 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 we're gonna do what we want. We're gonna build a data model that, that fits our UI, basically. Um, and, and, and that's essentially how you're gonna do it. Um, and, and a lot of this is, is, again, you'll see it more on the next slide. A lot of this is, is because of restrictions of the platform. So the platform intentionally pushes you to do this. Um, and what they're doing is they're using big data architecture for a relatively small amount of data. Um, and that's because of multi-tenancy, for example. Right? So if I look at my CRM data, it's not big data. I wouldn't classify it as big data. But as soon as they throw it in the multi-tenant with 400 other customers, it is big data. And now I have to use um, big data architecture, which isn't as, as structured. Um, and I can't like drill as deep into it. So I have to build a data model um, that's built for speed and not for uh, data integrity. Okay. Um, and this is what I was talking about. You, have, you end up with a lot of circular references. And again, this is encouraged by the architecture. So if I'm looking at my opportunity and I want to know the account, I can go from my opportunity directly up to the account. If there are orders associated to the opportunity, you can see the, you can see the ERD here. Um, anyone coming from a traditional uh, database background would cringe at this, right? But I can go from the opportunity to the order, to the contact, to the, to the account too. Also from the opportunity to the quote, to the contact, to the account. The opportunity to the quote, to the order, to the contact, to the account. The opportunity to the contact, then to the account. And then actually to the opportunity, to the contact role, to the contact, to the account contact role, and then to the account. Um, and every time you have one of these kind of circular references, you end up where, depending on the path you go, you end up with a different answer of which is the correct account. Now, that's not necessarily wrong because you can make an argument that they shouldn't be the same. Um, but at the end of the day, it's generally not documented of what all of these complicated relationships mean, and they cause a lot, a lot of confusion, right? Um, and again, this is just the way that it's encouraged, and it's more so because of the multi-tenancy and because of the uh, the, the speed, right? Now what happens is, is that in theory you're supposed to be writing code to enforce these relationships, um, but that's rarely, rarely done, right? So if I'm gonna have an opportunity and I have a contact and an account, um, in theory, and I think Salesforce might do this, but in theory you should have custom code that's gonna enforce the contact and the accounts to be the same if that's your requirement, but that's not necessarily always going to happen, if that's your requirement. Um, and the last reason, my personal favorite, is the absolute relative lack of importance of CRM data to an organization. Um, when I say this to a CRM crowd, uh, probably will, will make some people crazy, but it's absolutely true. When you, when you look at marketing systems and sales systems, they're not critical generally to the operations. Um, I put a couple of, I put a couple of uh, examples here to, to kind of really drive this home. Right? So what happens if Citibank's <coughs> core banking system goes down um, and people lose access to their money for two days? Right? Um, that's a lot worse if they can't send out their email alerts on deposits. Right? What would happen if Amazon can't process credit card payments for an hour? Um, and that's a lot worse if they can't send out package tracking numbers to their customers. Um, what happens if, if Google can't serve AdWords for 20 minutes? Right? Um, that's a lot worse if their call center goes down. But guess what? Google doesn't even care about a call center. They don't have one. <laughs> right? um, 
what happens if you don't enter your order data into your ERP system? Someone's going to get fired. What happens um, if you ship a diamond ring and the inventory system tells you diamond ring and uh, right? What happens if you want to need to ship a really expensive piece of merchandise and the inventory system is telling you it should be in location A and it's not there? Right? You basically flip the warehouse upside down until you find that piece. Right? Um, and if your gaming system don't properly track your gems, your coins, your points, people just quit the game and they stop playing. You lose your customers. Um, if your e-commerce your e platform can't validate credit cards, that would never happen. Right? Customer bill, that would just never happen. All right, and here's your best example. What happens if your top salesman refuses to enter his opportunities in the CRM system? He gets a thank you for being the top performer. Basically, right? Um, maybe, maybe somebody will tell him, can you please try harder to, uh, to enter your ops for the 40th time? Um, and then I'll say, sure. <laughs> maybe next year um, I'll get around to it. Right? And, it and it's simply because uh, CRM data is just, it's just not critical to the operations um, of a company. Okay. So um, these are six reasons, I think the top six reasons of why CRM, data, CRM systems are so susceptible to bad data. Um, and then you have a question, okay, great, so how do I stop this from happening? How do I stop these six things from being true? Um, and again, there's just nothing you can do about it because that's just the nature of CRM systems. Um, so the only thing we can do is instead of taking a proactive approach, right? The question is, what can you do to prevent this? You can't prevent it. You've got to take a reactive approach, which is corrective measures after things go wrong. Uh, and that's why I call this a war, right? Because it's a continual battle um, against bad data, post the bad data getting uh, created. Okay, um, do you want to take a question or two before we move on to our battle plan? Okay, awesome. After speechless. <laughs> okay. Um, so, step one is when you're choosing your features to implement, what you want to do is prioritize user features over managerial ones. Um, and what that means is if you're generally, you'll have management from some organization come to you and say, we need a CRM system because we're trying to solve X, Y, and Z. Often those are issues that are, that are causing pain to management. I need to understand my long-term forecasting and pipeline. Right? I need to know how many calls my, my call center agents are answering. Right? Um, and what happens is if you focus on solving those issues, you make the system less useful to the end user, so they they're, don't adopt it, um, and then you don't really invest in the user. So what you want to do is implement features that help the end user. Now the end user is invested in the system. They're invested in the data. They get a return on their data, particularly salespeople, right? If, they're getting, if they see the value in their data, how it's going to help them make sales, they will use the system, they will make sure the data is clean. So it's really giving your users incentive um, to use the system, use it right, keep the data clean, um, and that's by giving them a return on their investment in that good data. Um, and then once you have really good data, the users are using it, the managerial stuff will, will hopefully naturally come along. Um, or at least when you do want to implement that, you'll get a lot, a lot less resistance. Um, number two is you want to put in automated processes that are going to identify bad or stale data, classify records appropriately. Um, so essentially, right, you need to know the state of your data before you can fix something that's broke. Um, and this is actually really, really easy to do. All I gotta do is define what's a good data, what's a good record, what's a complete record, what's a bad record, um, and I wanna do that by record type, right? So a complete record for a prospect might be different than for a lead, and that might be different um, for a customer. Um, and, it, and it could be a simple little formula field that checks, are these fields populated? Um, are these fields valid? When was the record last updated? Um, so that's a great, a great thing for stale, as I often look at when was the record last opt updated, but not only that, when was a phone call or an activity last worked with this client or this customer or this individual? Um, so I know if people are constantly talking to them, the data is probably uh, fairly current. Um, and then what's incomplete? Again, just um, missing things. Okay. 
So number three is um, be on top of record ownership. So if you, if you have records that are going stale, um, what you want to do is essentially reassign the record. So you should have policies that say records need to be maintained um, and then they get time stamped when they, were pre when they were last updated or at least verify that the data is accurate. So for example, I'm an account executive, I have a requirement that, um, or as best industry practice to work, to work with my, um, my clients at least once or twice a year to give them a call check on, on, on them, I should use that opportunity to update my record. Um, and then I should know that these records are updated and that they're up to date. And if somebody is not doing that, they're not updating it, or essentially they're not talking to their clients, those, those records should be reassigned to someone who's going to, to properly manage that account um, and then keep that data, that data uh, updated. Um, and again, it's more so not just for data cleanliness, it's really, really good business. We want people who care about the accounts um, to be managing them. So if the account's being neglected, it's probably better to reassign it anyway. Okay. Um, number four is self-procuring data is, is king. Um, I really love self-procuring data. Essentially, self-procuring data is data that's self-maintained. Um, nowadays, with with social media, <coughs> if you can like connect to LinkedIn, you can often get your most current data right out of there. If you can buy data from a third party source that you know is valid, you can purchase that data. If you have an ERP system or some other customer system, feed the data into the CRM system. So this, obviously, these the integrations reduce. Um, the <laughs>